Welcome, you're watching Kaleidoscope Selling Co Life News Capsule. Welcome to Selling Co Life News Capsule. A hotly debated topic right now is the increase of value added tax to 18% from January. Several VAT exemptions will also be eliminated in the new year. The reasoning being Sri Lanka needs to fast track revenue collection for macroeconomic stability and sustainable growth targets. I caught up with senior research fellow at Advocata Institute, Roshan Pereira, over Zoom to get some clarity. Welcome, Roshan. Do you think Sri Lanka can actually have fiscal consolidation by increasing that to 18%? Or is this just to appease the IMF and our creditors? So, budget 2024 targets a primary surplus of 0.8% of GDP in 2024. So, it's kind of a revenue centered fiscal consolidation that we're looking at. Uh, and so the main thing is through through uh, tax revenue and the government expects to increase this tax revenue by three percentage points <laughs> of GDP to 13 percent and of this VAT is going to be the main source of revenue collection. This is a very ambitious target but it is essential that we keep this primary deficit target because it is basically the performance criteria under the IMF program. So if that is so we really need to also look at expenditure and to rationalize expenditure, which we have not really seen in the budget for 2024. There have been eight changes to VAT since 2002, twice in 2022 alone. In the long term, how sustainable are these ad hoc changes? When the VAT was initially introduced to Sri Lanka in the early 2000s, it was based on a very careful study. We implemented it in 2002, by 2004, say, once it was sort of uh, established in the country, tax uh, VAT revenue to GDP increased to 6%. Now, this has come down to 2%, mainly because we have basically made all these ad hoc changes to the tax regime. So, it is important that we have a very consistent tax policy. One, for revenue collection, because even uh, tax administration is very difficult if you keep changing these, the, the regime. But definitely also for businesses. First, we need to see what is the targeted revenue we need to have. And then, determine the tax rates, the threshold and the and the exemption list based on that. The latest increase will reduce purchasing power, disposable income quantum and also reduce demand for goods. What will this do to the economy in 2024? So unfortunately as a country and as households, we have been spending more than we have earned. So at some and have racked up huge debts. Now basically we have to deal with the consequences by tightening our bills, both as a country and also as households. So yes, I think higher taxes will, I mean, will definitely have an impact on disposable income and purchasing power. But then what is the alternative? Because governments can fund the expenditure either through what we call an inflation tax, which is basically borrowing from the central bank and increasing the amount of money in circulation which was our experience no, in the last few years. And what did the, yeah, the central bank basically was financing the deficit. But what did that lead to? We had inflation rates of over 70%, which basically wiped out people's incomes. Now, at least the government has stopped financing its deficits by borrowing from the central bank. Because actually for government, it's very easy to tax using an inflation tax because there's much less resistance from, from people. But the overall impact on the economy will be much larger. So I think in the next short to medium term, we will have to go with these taxes until we have better macro stabilization. But then maybe we can start reducing that. If you like Kaleidoscope, don't forget to subscribe, like and follow us. We are on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. We will take care of the risks. Silico Life.